So good evening everyone. Tonight I'm going to take you deeper to the teaching of the Buddha. To me, this is the heart and soul of the teaching of the Buddha, of Buddhism. You can look at it that way. So if you understand this framework and you can apply it in your practice from day one when you ordain, it's going to benefit you a lot because you see the whole framework of how the Buddha wants monks to be trained. But before we get to that, I'd like to share one sutra with you. This sutra is very short, only one paragraph, but it's come with a very deep meaning of how the Buddha wants monk to be trained. This lifestyle of a monk is a simple life, but it's not easy. It is simple, but it's not easy. This is one definition that I really, I like it a lot. Okay, if we reflect on this, you know, to be a monk, what is the monk in the eyes of the Buddha? He gives many definitions throughout the, 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 the text, throughout the teaching. But one of these definitions that gave by the Buddha, this one is quite interesting. Not be become a bhikkhu, because be beg, beg means asking from others. Ask, from now on, we ask for everything. We don't cook, we don't make money, we don't earn anything. Everything you need from now on, 100% come from the support of the lay people clothes, food, shelter, medicine, transportation. Someone pay for us. Someone take care of us because they have faith in us, because they want to free our time so we can practice meditation and study the Dharma. Not because we beg from others, not by we wearing this saffron robe. You shave your head, you put this on. Can you just right away call yourself, I'm a bhikkhu, I'm a monk? Yes and no. Appearance-wise, you look different from the lay people. And people who dress like this, wear hairstyle like this, we call them a monk. But is that what the Buddha means? This is not one truly become a monk because all of this. People who become a bhikkhu in the eyes of the Buddha is the person who overcome all evil. Stop doing bad, doing good, have loving kindness, compassion, you name it. There are many areas that, that that person need to develop himself from day one that he become a monk for the rest of his life. Even though he has to disrobe and go back to be a lay life, no problem. You continue to develop yourself. And according to this definition, lay person can be called a bhikkhu too. You can call yourself a bhikkhu if you overcome all evil. Observe precept, meditation, give, take care of your people in your family, mom, dad, kids, then you can be called a bhikkhu too, according to this definition. And in one training, you see this a lot. Tonight, I, I will introduce you to something new, different keyword of how the Buddha want monks to be trained, something deeper. But this is the starting point of someone who entered the monkhood. When someone entered the monkhood, people understand the nature of life, they listen to the teaching of the Buddha, oh, life is dukkha, oh, Dukkha come from the cause of craving, and that craving caused us to be suffering, and suffering can be ended if you're following the Eightfold Path. Oh, okay, understand. Then I should got myself ordained after I understand the teaching of the Buddha. And that's usually a typical case. That's what usually happening. So when a man has faith toward the teaching of the Buddha, he seeks for ordination. But when someone becomes a monk, that person right away, they start getting on the highway of self development or mental liberation. Because lay people live here with five precepts, sometimes eight precepts, they have wife, have kids, have family, do things, but they also want to be a good people as well. So they make donation, they meditate, but they don't want to be a monk. They may understand that life is suffering, but I'm not in a hurry. I still enjoy what I am doing at the moment, being a father, being a martyr, no problem. You have to continue doing good. But monk get on the highway. He don't want to waste his time to do this kind of stuff, making a living, take care of children, wife and kids. I'm just, I'm just going to take a shortcut, get on highway and train myself on the fast track to liberate my mind from suffering. And the cause of suffering is come from craving, craving or tanha, which we will talk about this when we learn the, the concept of the Four Noble Truth. This is on the Second Noble Truth. The Buddha said the wise man grounded in three things. First, ethic. Second, developing the mind. And the third, wisdom. 
a keen and alert medicant. Medicant is bhikkhu or monk. Can untangle. Untangle what? This tangle mass. What is tangle mass? Tangle mass is craving or sometimes ignorant or avicca. These things cause us suffering. If you want to get to the bottom of the root cause of suffering or get rid of all kind of craving in your mind or the ignorance in your mind, you must develop these three things. Have them fully mastered. First one is ethic. What is ethic? Ethic is sila, morality. What is developing the mind? You may be familiar with the term meditation, samadhi. Samadhi or meditation in English. Tonight you will understand this word deeper. And the third thing the Buddha wants us to develop is wisdom. Wisdom. When you study by yourself, you may come across the Pali word. It's called panya. Again, wisdom is wisdom. We will get to the meaning in a moment. So there are three things: ethic or sila, developing the mind or practice meditation or samadhi, and then develop wisdom. So the Buddha gives very short explanation of how can you remove craving from your mind. You need to master these three things: ethics, developing the mind through meditation practice, and cultivate wisdom. And it's our job to understand what it means by develop or cultivate ethic, cultivate the mind, and cultivate wisdom. And in this sutra, you start seeing the new vocabulary in similar framework, but in a much deeper dimension. So here, the sutra is k a d a p a Sutta from Angkutra Nikaya 3.82. It's a parable of the donkey. The Buddha compared the donkey to the monk. <laughs> okay. He says, "Suppose a bhikkhu, a bhikkhu, a donkey follow behind a group of cattle, and thinking, 'I am to a cow.'" The donkey is thinking, "I am to a cow. I am, I am a cow." But he is donkey. He following the cow. He said, "I am to a cow. I am to a cow." But it doesn't look like a cow. It doesn't sound like a or leave footprint like a cow because it's not a cow. Still, it follow behind the cattle and thinking, "I am to a cow. I am to a cow." <laughs> so, what does it mean? In the same way, a bhikkhu follow closely behind the sangha. A man or then become a monk. Now he call himself a bhikkhu. He follow the sangha. He live with the sangha, and then he think, "I am a monk too. I am a monk too." But he doesn't have the same enthusiasm to undertaking the training under what number one higher ethic, number two higher mind, and number three higher wisdom. As the other bhikkhus, still he follow closely behind the sangha and thinking, "I am." Among two, I am among two. When I first came across this sutra, it kind of hit me badly. Said, oh, becoming a monk is not just chanting s a n g k a m p a n t e u p a s a m a s a n g y a c h a m i u l u m p a t a n o p a n t e s a n g k o anu k a p a n g u p a t h a y a Fifteen minutes, you become a monk. Put this outfit, orange outfit, shave your head, get the bow, and go arm s h r o u It's not enough to consider. We, as a true bhikkhu in the eyes of the Buddha, the monk or that man must train himself. Then he can claim himself that I am a monk. And how can you train yourself? This is it. This is how the Buddha give the training scheme or training framework to a man who become a monk from day one until he achieve enlightenment. So you must understand what it means by higher ethic, higher mind, higher wisdom. But in the previous sutra, the Buddha mentioned the same thing. But it's not the same thing, <laughs> the same framework, but it's much deeper. It depends on who did he give the teaching to. This one he talked only about sin, sila, samadhi, and panya. But this one he talking about higher sila, higher samadhi, and higher panya. Are they the same or are they different? Sila, samadhi, and panya, and higher sila, higher samadhi, and higher panya. This is the heart and soul of the teaching of the Buddha. If we understand, and if we can put them into practice correctly, so you should train yourself like this. We will have a keen enthusiasm, energetic, of this spiritual journey to develop yourself from day one that you become a monk. Under these three framework: higher sila or higher ethic, higher mind, and higher wisdom. How come? He doesn't use the word higher meditation. The question is, why did 
he used the word higher meditation why he used the word higher mind is meditation and the mind the same thing or it can be used interchangeably okay so we will find the answer together so the sutra is done very short uh, you are a donkey follow the cow and you said i'm a cow too i'm a cow too but you're not a cow you're a donkey and now you're a man you become a monk and then you say i'm a monk too i'm a monk too why oh because i wear the same robe i shave my hair i go arms around then i'm a monk too i'm a monk too no not enough it's not enough for you to call yourself i am a bhikkhu in the eyes of the buddha so i want you to know understand and understand this before day one that you become a monk we have been preparing for 10 days by now okay and in the next few days you become a monk i want you to see this picture and feel comfortable and see the whole picture that where are you heading what which kind of area that you are developing yourself and what's the end result essence of this sutra is you know, the buddha tried to explain to that group of monks that he teach that you know a foolish monastic without spiritual training if you don't train yourself you may be close to a good teacher great teacher scholar but he remain foolish because you don't learn you don't train you don't develop anything you can live life like this five years ten years thirty years for all your whole life but you develop nothing you change nothing even if a fool all his life draw near the wise he understand he basically he don't understand anything just like spoon never taste the soup but if someone smart okay you stay close to the wise people good teacher he quickly understand the dhamma just like the tongue taste the soup you feel the taste of the dhamma when you understand the teaching you put into practice you know oh observe precept is good my mind free from worry Oh, meditation is good. Now, in that 30 minutes, I feel something that I never felt before. And how did you get there? Oh, because I observe precept. Oh, because I asked my teacher how to deal with hindrances, thought, anger, restlessness, remorse, those kind of things. So these things is reflect that a monk should be trained and you should be trained wisely. You should reflect on what you learn. Don't just blind believe. Let's see if we understand what we learn from this particular sutra. Let me start from here. You see, this the Buddha is. The more I study, I feel like he is very smart. <laughs> he fully understood the nature of life, and he put everything into a framework. If we understand what meaning behind each framework, it helps us to develop ourselves much faster. Life is like this. There are three things: behavior, mind, and wisdom. These are the three factor. That call life. Think deeper. Life means this life, you and me at the moment. You need to you need to understand these three elements, and I will link it to the concept of sila samadhi and panya. Behavior is how we do things, action and speech. Mind is how we think, how we perceive, how we make decision. Wisdom is about understanding, see things the way they are. The more wisdom you have. The more that can lead you to have a good life, because you will know what to think, what not to think, what to behave, what not to behave. So this is life, and the Buddha understand this nature of life. If you link it to concept of sila, samadhi, and panya, it happen to be the same word. Okay, sila, samadhi, panya. Sila is behavior, mind is samadhi, and wisdom is wisdom. In that sutra that we learn, the word samadhi is called mind development. It starts from here. So in this concept, the Buddha named it. He call it. He call it tri sikha. Tri mean three. Sikha mean education, development, <coughs> or training. So tri sikha is the training of three things. Training. What training sila, training samadhi, which is train the mind, and training wisdom. Three things, and here we go. Behavior, uh, wisdom. Wisdom is here, mind, and sila, or 
behavior okay behavior is what action right your action and your speech wisdom support the mind and the mind support behavior it support each other wisdom mean you understand right you understand what you understand things you understand that drinking alcohol is not good waste money you know destroy your health if you see that alcohol is not good this is your will of understanding of drinking alcohol gambling gaming sexual misconduct killing this is how you see how you view the world and this is your wisdom or understanding and when you see the world like that your mind feel like you know what i'm not gonna associate with this thing i'm gonna stay far away from this thing from killing lying sexual misconduct when your mind think like that your behavior will be like that you will not buy it you will not support your people you love to buy it you see how it support each other and when your and the mind also support wisdom when your mind is at peace you meditate better when you meditate better you allow yourself to access to the higher wisdom you want to learn something more and mind also uh, behavior also support wisdom why because when you don't break precept you are help the mind to be free from worry and when the mind free from worry because your bodily action and verbally action is pure then your mind is at peace when your mind at peace you can learn something okay and understand something in a much better way this is how it support each other you can uh, acquire higher and higher wisdom so it's more like looping it support each other wisdom mind and behavior so now we're going to zoom in into each one of these about precept about mind and about wisdom to see the difference between the first level of precept and the higher level of precept or sila regular mind and higher mind regular wisdom and higher wisdom what does it mean and how are they different and this is the nature of life okay so from here as a man living in this world he is not alone we are not alone we live with people father mother people at work people in the community people in the country wherever you go you meet with people so this is a framework that everyone can practice and when you practice correctly your life will be happy from this moment on why this is the concept of sila sila sometimes you hear the word as a monk we hear the word vinaya or patimukha right sometimes you hear the word precept rules law regulation whatever this is the vinaya this is the sila it's a framework for us okay to help us not to harm ourselves and not to harm others sila is about us living together in peace and harmony with oneself and with others because we are not alone if we behave correctly according to the framework of 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 rule wherever you belong if you are in the us you have different law than thailand in norway in belgium you have different law different culture those law those culture is considered the, the framework of vinaya or precept or sila again sila is broader than you think not just five not just eight not just ten not just 207 27 not just 311 for bikumi this is man-made sila it come later the buddha invented this framework it helped us to easy to practice if he said stop doing bad and continue doing good how can i do that oh okay why don't you stop doing these five things stop killing stop lying stop sexual misconduct oh okay now i got it so i i, I practice like this so it's a man-made precept but the precept itself it's super broad you must understand this because you are not alone you live with people precept is a framework for us to interact with the outside world in a peace and harmony way when we talk about world in buddhism there are two things number one the world is you and me human and animal being okay being or we can call social and another kind of world is the nature or things or material there are two levels of world 
if you observe precept observe precept come from understanding the precept and then you willing to observe why because you would see the benefit of observing this precept whether five as a layman 200 as a monk 300 as a bhikkhuni you understand those framework it will help you to live life happy and happier less and less conflict wherever you are whoever you live with imagine if everyone in the world just observe five precepts no one kill anyone no one steal anything from anybody your wife your kid your daughter will be safe there's no sexual misconduct in the business world no one lie to anyone so you can trust the world can be at, at peace just by observe five precepts no law no need any law and if you behave correctly, okay, you will live with people at peace, less conflict. And if you looking at in terms of living with the nature, there will be no climate change, no global warming, no cutting down the forest, deforestation. People will not take advantage from the nature because they understand that if they behave wrongly to the nature, we will hurt the Mother Earth and that will come back to us. It may not come back to this generation, but it will come back to the future generation. And now global warming is, it cannot fix, it's beyond fixing already. All we, all the best we can do now, just minimize it. That's all, we cannot fix it. This is sad though. That's why we hear the term invented you know, by United Nations, by SDG, Sustainable Development Goal, to deal with social problem, environmental problem, economic problem because we behave to the nature wrongly or improperly. We take advantage from the nature and we take advantage from each other. So this is precept, it's huge, it's a huge area. You don't have to be Buddhist to practice this. As a human being, all of us, we should practice and understand this concept, sila, samadhi, and panya. This is to me, this is a universal framework. It's a holistic human development. And it can apply to every single one, male, female, nothing to do with religious. It's about your own life. So this is the precept on one side. Okay. So if we behave correctly, uh, husband and wife behave correctly. Okay. Boss and your employee. Okay. Prime minister and his citizen. You know, communities, family will be at peace. People will behave correctly. The nature in this case, and number two. Is as a monk, I like you to reflect on your four necessity. Okay, your necessity, like what? Food, right? Clothes, shelter, and medicine. What about technology, IT? You name it. Material thing that we need as a monk. If we deal with this improperly, we break precept. The precept is about helping us to deal with this thing mindfully. What kind of food should you eat? How much food should you eat? Where the food come from? Why do you chant yatha padayang pavatamanang tha tumatame vetang? Oh, I eat because not in entertaining my taste, but I eat because the body needs to survive. So it helps lessen my suffering from hungry. So I will not increase the new you know, suffering because of overeating myself. And that's what you said. You have to deal with food properly then your life will be happy, you'll be okay, you can meditate better. You have to deal with clothes, with shelter, with medicine properly, according to the rule that we follow, in that 200 rules. We not just go out there and keep on asking people for the new clothes, give me the new you know, uh, shelter, or give me uh, you know, tasty food, chicken, pizza, you name it. That's not our duty to go demanding food from or necessity from the lay people. You see? Precept is not just 5, 8, 10, 2, 2, 7. It's about how to live with people in peace and harmony way. As a Buddhist monk, now you are a monk. But if you go back home as a lay person, then you apply this concept as well. How precept or sila can help you to live peaceful life when you go back home. This is the first area about precept. And another thing we learn about the meaning of Sila, right? Sila, we talk about. Sila mean mean uh, being of such a nature, which is normal. We talk about normal, and we explain the normal of water. Right? Water is clear. Water is bright. Water 
you know, will label itself whether whatever container is there, it will be labeled itself, and it's you know flow from high to low. This is the nature of water. We understand that. And another meaning, get used to when we apply to the reality as a Buddhist monk. Precept. I want you to look precept in this meaning. Get used to. Get used to what? Get used to something until it becomes normal, it becomes you. It becomes normal as a good person, as a wholesome person. Normal of your behavior, the way you do things, the way you say things, become normal, wholesome, wholesome action, okay? Body and speech. Wholesome, normal. No agitate, no lie, no kill, calm, loving kindness, forgive, forget. Smile, respect, become normal. It must be normal. Precept, you start from here, you may not understand it, but as you practice or observe it, mindfully try to understand it. One day, it will become you. You will become precept, precept become you. So the first level of sila is understand that we, as a monk, we have rule to follow understand them, understand the manner of a good monk, understand the nature of good monk. This is the first level. You may break precept, okay? Today, maybe mosquito come by, and then automatically you just hit it, because you don't think, you're not mindful enough, so you accidentally kill the mosquito. And then you reflect, oh, I'm a monk, I shouldn't kill the mosquito. So now you remind yourself that I break precept, okay, tomorrow I will be mindful. And tomorrow the mosquito come. All of a sudden you about to hit it, but you mindful enough. You say, "Oh, you know what? I can't." So you just let it go, or you just let it go. But first thought, you want to do something about it. <laughs> but before you hit it, somehow your mindfulness telling you that I shouldn't be doing this because you are aware that I am observe precept. I shouldn't be killing even little things. This is the first level of precept. And five years down the road, if you keep on doing this, back and forth, back and forth, next time mosquito bite you, you will never ever do this or have intention to kill it, even a little thing like that. You will do something else, maybe use the pen or let it go, open your eye and let it go. If you see the mosquito fly in your room, you will not just running around and try to, try to kill it, but you will seek for some other solution, maybe open up the door, or use the cause or use something to let or to release those mosquitoes out of your room instead of you know, trying to kill it. So later on, it becomes higher precept, higher sila. That means you become sila, sila become you. That means you have developed a wholesome bodily and speed action automatically, automatically wholesome. Do something good by default. Someone say something bad to you, you will never say something bad to those person because now sila become you, you become sila. But initially, as you train yourself in the first five years, the first five years we are called Nawaka, which means you are new, new monk. The Buddha gives us five years. In these five years, you can make a lot of mistakes. Because you're not mindful enough, your sati is not strong, your concentration is not strong, your sila is not strong. So you make a mistake here and there, someone says something bad to you, you are ready to yield back. You show your face that you're getting mad. You're not mindful enough to tell yourself to stop that behavior, that reaction. But believe it or not, it can be trained to be a person who always calm, always understand and respond wholesomely, smile to someone who yell back, to, who yell to you. It can be trained to be that person. This is how the Buddha wants us to be trained. Sila become you, you become Sila. Okay, this is the second layer of higher Sila. And if you look at this closer, when something happening automatically, what do we call? We call it habit. Your habit become normal. Sila is normal. Become, you get used to this type of behavior, this kind of behavior of doing, you know, say something good, of doing something good, 
willing to do and be calm every time you do you know those behavior it become habit habit of mindful of eating know what to eat right away you see the food on the table your mind will not agitate it your mind will not overwhelm with those kind of luxury food on the table you will be mindful and only select what best for your body not for entertaining your tongue sila become you now food what about clothes what about medicine what about transportation what about dealing with women what about dealing with men what about dealing with money everything like all of this that i just mentioned is precept is sila sila become you you become sila you will never ever break precept that's called the higher sila which we don't have it yet we are on our way to developing ourselves to be at that level at the higher sila is there anything called higher sila if there is what would it be so i will not answer this question for now i have want you to think about it so now we move on to the second element okay we talk about behavior number one. so now let's go into the mind what is mean by my development and higher mind regular mind and higher mind and how can we apply this into our training how can we train our, how can we train our mind my meditation or samadhi what does it mean <clears throat> what does it mean by meditation or samadhi it's very simple the meaning of samadhi is concentration or focus unification the mind become unifying unifying unification of my concentration stay focused this is the meaning of samadhi and how come when we learn the tricycle sometimes we hear the buddha use the word samadhi or meditation here you will see this picture often that you may be confused sometimes you see my development sometimes you see meditation some teachers use the word meditation all the time some teachers use both vocabulary please don't get confused today let's make it clear when we talk about mind the mind is broad the quality of the mind the dhamma or the virtue of the mind meditation is one of them because meditation means concentration samadhi or sati or mindfulness is another one okay what about loving kindness what about joy what about forgiveness what about passion what about happy what about patient what about calm what about peace you name it all of these are the quality of the mind the mind can be calm joyful peace happy you know forgive forget loving kindness compassion persevere never give up good view you name it mindfulness is one of them these there are many more okay many more all of these are the quality of the mind or the virtue of the mind that we can develop if you don't have loving kindness you always get angry you cannot forgive you cannot forget then you know that this area of your mind you need to develop develop what develop loving kindness develop letting go develop forgiveness develop compassion then you need to develop that area because you know that the reason you are unhappy because you cannot let go your anger resentment someone say something bad you keep it for years you can't let go oh now you know this area i need to work on this area i need to develop and that is why it's called my development develop all of this and more of this more there are so many virtue of the mind that you can develop you name it then you know yourself which area you should develop some people born very stingy never give only take selfish judgmental people in the meeting i'm always right you always wrong all the time and you know okay i am that kind of person <laughs> now i know my weak point something that i can develop but you know what with all of this with all of this virtue of the mind meditation is number one 
meditation is on top of the list. Without meditation, all of this have a hard time to develop. How can you develop loving kindness if your mind is agitated, angry? But meditation means what? Mean stable, calm, concentrate, right? So everything has to start from something stable. Stable mind first, and then you can add on all kind of virtue into your mind. You can develop all kind of things. Start from having a stable mind, concentrate mind. If this table is unstable, let's say one leg is broken, it's go like this. You cannot put anything on top of this table. It's going to fall apart. It's going to fill up because the table is unstable. But now it is stable and strong. Concentration is strong. Now bring it on. Loving kindness, passion, forgiveness, whatever it is, it's go from here. Go from the stable mind. But if your mind is everywhere, agitated, craving, one this, one that, then you cannot develop anything effectively. That is why they, um, when you see this, okay, sometimes in some sutra you see the word samadhi. Okay, they use meditation instead of using the word mind. Okay, but it's supposed to be mind development, sila development, mind development, and wisdom development. And sometimes you hear the word just meditation development. Here we go. Meditation development is here. Samadhi or concentration is meditation development. The first one is develop sila. Second one is develop the mind through meditation or concentration. This is the word I use with purpose. And the third one is develop wisdom. Wisdom again, wisdom is wisdom. We use the same word. If you see sila, samadhi and panya, now you can think deeper that, oh, Samadhi is not just meditation. Samadhi means mind development. In the Pali term, we call jitta. Jitta, jitta means this. Not this is the heart, not jit, <laughs> not the mind. Jitta means mind, mind development. Okay. Uh, uh, the actual term is called jitta bhavana, sila bhavana, jitta bhavana, and panya bhavana. Bhavana means what? Bhavana means develop, grow. Okay, again, this new term for you. Let me write it down. Sila Bhavana. B H A V A. Bhavana means to grow, to develop, to develop. Something that you never have, then you make it happen. You don't have loving kindness, you develop it, you make it happen. You never meditate, you develop meditation habit. This is called Bhavana. And bhavana what? Sila bhavana, samadhi bhavana, and panya bhavana. Same thing. Sin, samadhi, panya, or sila, mind, and wisdom. Same thing. So now today you see everything. So I hope you understand better. Samadhi come with two meaning. Samadhi can be the state of mind, being still, or it can be the method or the system of meditation use the same word. So when you think of samadhi, it depends on which context you are talking about. You may be talking about state of mind being still, and that's called the still mind, because the root uh, of the word samadhi means still. At the same time, samadhi can mean the system of meditation, walking meditation, loving kindness meditation. This is uh, another word that uh, refer back to the word samadhi. Samatha, samadhi, same, same thing. Vipassana not the same. Samatha is the same with Samadhi. When we talk about Samatha Bhavana and Samadhi Bhavana, we're talking about exact same thing, which is develop the mind to be still, develop the mind to be calm. And how can we do that? The Buddha gives more than 40 techniques in the Buddhist text to help calm the mind down so we can apply whichever work for us and that's called samatha. And these three things, they are interrelated. It's not just, you may feel like, oh, we have to develop precept first and then go meditate and then learn the Dhamma. Initially, yes. Initially, okay, because all of a sudden, a man come to Buddhism, let's go meditate. It's hard for his mind to be still if he's still cute, still lying, still intoxicant. So we go from there, but eventually, when you start practicing all of this, you can practice simultaneously. 
because they support each other. They cannot be separated. What about mind and higher mind? Mind means what? Mind means meditation, mind means loving kindness, mind means forgiveness, mind means compassion, right? Mind means the quality of the mind or the virtue of the mind. And regular mind is, well, if you think of mind as meditation in this case, you study how to meditate. You train your mind to be still. Five minutes, go out again, come back, stay one minute, go out again, come back 30 minutes, go out one hour. This is how you train the mind. You are training the mind to be still. Apply all kind of technique in the world that you learn to help calming the mind down. Because when your mind is calm, then you can develop the rest much better. Develop loving kindness, forgive. If you have a headache, someone says something bad to you, meditate 10 minutes before bed. Calm the mind down, relax, let go and go back to sleep. You can sleep in peace. But without meditation, you sleep with that anger, sleep with that agitated mind, you cannot sleep well. In your dream, you may keep hunting that person, try to kill him. <laughs> because you get agitated. Instead of doing that, give yourself 5-10 minutes. You know, do chanting, meditation, come back to the breath, come back to the mantra, come back to the object, whatever it is that works for you to calm the mind down before bed. And that is mind development in regular, in the first level, to develop the quality of mind to be calm, to be understanding, to learn to forgive, forget, compassion, understand others, know your mind, know your emotion, know how you feel, and maintain the mind to be calm in all situations. That's the first level of mind development. If you have come this far, Congratulations, you are success at the first level already. That you can be calm, whatever it is. Food you don't like, I'm okay. It's too hot today, I'm okay. I don't want to wake up, I'm okay, I'm going to wake up. No matter what it is, you will be okay. Start from being okay. You may not like it, but you're okay. Eventually, you're not just okay. You are disciplined. You do whatever it takes. You do what you're supposed to do whenever you're supposed to do, whether you like it or not. You're in different level already. What about higher mind? Higher mind, this is quite an highest mind. <laughs> okay, what is highest mind? Mind, higher mind, higher. We're talking about mind development, higher mind development, and highest mind development. What is higher mind development? Meditation comes with mindfulness, okay? Always. Or sati. Sati is what? Mindfulness is what? This is mindfulness. You with me 100%? Or you just with me physically, but your mind in bed already? <laughs> that means you're not mindful. <laughs> mindfulness is being at this very present moment, knowing what's going on. We are having lecture. Do you understand what I am talking about? Or are you with me 100%? Or your switch turn on and off? <laughs> When Lung Pi will finish, <laughs> when the class will be over. <laughs> that means you're not mindful. When you're mindful, you can concentrate better. See, it's, it's, it's there. This is pretty deep. What, what I'm sharing with you at this moment, okay, we just hit on the very superficial of this framework. But at least it's better than nothing. Better than we just skip it and, oh, okay, I assume that you understand precept. I understand that, assume that you, un and you understand meditation. And I assume that you understand the word wisdom. I shouldn't be assuming. What is higher mind then? Okay, mind is develop the mind to be calm, be still. You, you're getting there. Why are you getting there? Because you observe precept. You know the, the relationship between precept and mind. So when your mind agitated, you, you remind yourself, you know what? I observe precept. I will not say something bad. I will not kill that mosquito. Oh, because mindful and mindfulness help you to stay conscious. Then, if you don't kill it, then you come back to a calm state, relaxed state. You meditate, mosquito fly, you annoy it, you want to kill it. And then you remind yourself, you know what, I'm a monk, I'm a harmful person, or harmless person. <laughs> a monk shouldn't be harmful, right? Whoever, whoever near to you, that person or that thing, that living being will be safe, 100%. Mosquito, fly, they will be safe if they are around you. And that's about 
mind development. Higher mind is something higher than that. What is higher mind? It has to be somehow related to what we just talked about. We pretend, not pretend, we try to calm the mind. When the mind gets agitated, we try and we bring it back. And that's the first level. You become a person who are always mindful, always calm, always still and understanding. You fully awake of all situation. One meaning of the word Buddha means awaken. He not asleep. He awake to the truth. You awake of you awake to the truth that of whatever happening in front of you. And you can remain calm, you can remain conscious, then you can make decision better. And most likely you make a, a wholesome decision, not kill, not lie for sure. It's become you. And that's one word that I mentioned last week. Uh, it's about imperturbable. Let me try to write it again. This is a good word. This person not easy to get agitated or get upset with anything in the world. His mind is always calm, always pure, always cool and cool. You and your mind become this. You think of the ocean. Ocean has wave, right? It's like this. Sometimes like this, sometimes like this, sometimes like this. This is the first level of my development. If you're in good mood, you are calm. If you get agitated, you go up there. Sometimes you get upset, you go down there. This is you at the first level. As you develop your mind more and more, okay, it will become like this. Super peaceful, super still, uncheckable mind. The defilement cannot stir your mind. Greed, hatred, delusion, agitated, cannot stir up your mind. You not go up, not go down. You remain calm and clear. The nature of the mind is clear and it's bright. This is the state of mind which is not ordinary people like us can maintain all the time. Yeah, we are on the first level, most of us on the first level. But there are many people in the past that have developed the quality of their mind up to this level. What about the highest mind? Still question here. <laughs> At, this, at the first level, our mindfulness is not strong. We forget things all the time, here and there. We're not being at the very present moment all the time. Not 100%. When you meditate in that 30 minutes, did you really with yourself 100%? Did you 100% aware that I am with my breath all the time, or I am with my object all the time? You lost here and there. That means your mindfulness is not strong. Your mindfulness is not strong, Concentration is not strong. That's the first level. But you are trying. You're trying to develop your mind to be calm, develop your mindfulness to be strong, to be fast, to know that when the mind moves, bring it back. When it moves, bring it back. But at the second level, sati, or mindfulness, and samadhi, or concentration, always there. Even when you sleep. This is hard but it can be developed and that's the good news that the mind can be developed and person who develop the mind usually you can notice that he is sabai sabai means he is relaxed calm smile these are some of the indicators that these people have a good mind you may not know how calm he is but every time you see him around or having or staying around him you feel like I feel good about this man Never yell to anybody, always smile, understand, always humble, always respect. These are some of the manifestations of people who have good mind. But Arahan, people in the past, people who achieved highest level of the self-development, these people, they don't have suffering in their mind at all. They may have physical pain, headaches, stomach aches, diarrhea, but they have no mental suffering whatsoever. That's the big difference. And that's, again, it's good news that the Buddha teach us how to get there, how to be at that level. Okay? I haven't answered this question yet, okay, about highest precept and highest mind. I will keep it here. So let me move on to the third element, 
which is what? The wisdom, number three. We talk about sila, second level of sila or higher sila. We're talking about mind development and higher mind development. And now we are going to talk about wisdom and higher wisdom. All right? Again, we're talking about our life. This is the process of life. If we understand this and put it to practice, we will live life noble or happy and happier and perhaps one day happiest when we realize Nibbana. The word wisdom. What is the translation for the word wisdom? What about understanding? Wisdom is understanding. When you understand, voila, you got it. You're free from suffering because you understand the way things are. You understand what caused that problem. And then you can fix it because you understand. If you fix it correctly, problem goes away and then you are happy. So the first level of wisdom, when we talk about wisdom in Buddhism, we talk about wisdom about life. Okay, and how to live good life. We're not talking about wisdom about the world, about making a living, about you know, financial, about global issue. No. We talk about we refer specifically to the wisdom about life and the nature of life. Here this picture telling you that, oh, okay, I'm not alone in this world. I live with people. So I need to obey the law. I need to obey the rule wherever I belong. Now you are going to become a monk. Oh, monk, observe 200 rules. So prepare yourself to obey those rules. Practice according to the manner of a good monk. So you see the benefit you prepare yourself for that. This is called understanding of how to live good life, how to be a better monk when you become a monk. It's about understanding. This level of understanding is the first level of wisdom development. From you who know nothing about being good monk, being a happy monk, being good man or happy man or live like a noble. Now you have come to know or understand all of this. Okay? The Vinaya, uh, living with others, living with nature, dealing with food, necessity, shelter, medicine. Understand all of this is called wisdom. Because if you don't understand, you make a mistake. When you make a mistake, you're in trouble. When you're in trouble, you are unhappy. But if you understand, you can behave properly according to all the rules, all the regulations. Then you're not only happy yourself, you create a happy environment, training environment for others as well. And this is called wisdom. Wisdom is knowing how to live good life wherever you are. How to live life happy. Happy without breaking precept. Happiness has to be on top of precept automatically. Not taking advantage from others. The reason you're happy is because you understand full, fully of your context wherever you are. If you husband what can make you a happy man as a good husband? You know who involved, what involved. Wife, children, financial, what happening in the world, saving, medicine, COVID, whatever it is. This, this is the big area of life about wisdom. Wisdom to help us living good life. Start from there. And now you are going to become a monk. You must know how to be a happy monk, how to live comfortably when you become a monk. Not just all of a sudden someone tell you, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have 300 rules in front of you, and then you quit. <laughs> Those rules are not there to inconvenience you. Instead, or oppositely, those rules are there to help you to live life happier as a monk. As we learn the purpose of the Vinaya or the Patimokha, right? is to prevent the bad people in the community, is to support the good people in the community, to help strengthen the Dharma, to help unify the Sangha. Those kind of things are the purpose of having the rules. It's not just there to inconvenience us for no reason. And that's the first level of wisdom. What about the higher wisdom? Yeah, higher wisdom. What is higher wisdom? To so understand, you understand the nature of things, right? You understand the law, you understand the rule, you understand the precept, you understand loving kindness, you understand everything basically to live good life in general. So I know you come from 
you know, Canada, from Norway, from Belgium, from New York. I know you, you know me. I know why you're here, I know what you want. So I want to make sure that we live together in peace and harmony. But what about something deeper than this? Something higher than this? What exactly that the Buddha wants monks to know and to train up to that level? Above just knowing each other, knowing rules, knowing regulation, knowing the manner, know what to think, know when to think, know what to eat, know when to eat. Yes. Learn by heart. Learn by heart. Internalize about what? It's a good word. Internalize about what? Those things. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. <laughs> you understand the truth of life. The truth of life is dukkha. That's the nature of life. And dukkha comes from cause. And what causes dukkha is craving or tanha. And what and, and, and tanha can be removed and how can we remove them by following the Eightfold Path so now I'm talking about the Four Noble Truth this is what it means by higher wisdom not just live life harmony with others we go deeper than that we know deeper than that oh you are just one set of five aggregates you also one set of five aggregates male, female, dog, us we the ultimate truth, we are the same. We compose of earth, water, wind, fire, and the mind, and it becomes us. We die, we reborn. This is in a deeper dimension. We understand that. And when someone says something bad, you understand, oh, okay, that drive by craving. He is angry. Maybe he has a bad day. That's why he says something like that. You understand, you accept, you forgive him, you are happy. This is wisdom, higher wisdom. But you may be still suffering, even though you understand. It doesn't mean that you are free from suffering by acquiring or developing up to this level of higher understanding of the nature of life. That is why there is something called high age. Wisdom. <laughs> what is high age wisdom? That the Buddha wants us to develop the wisdom up to that level. This is what we are talk, have been talking about in the past 30 minutes. We are talking about the nature of life and how to live life happy, how the Buddha wants monks to be trained. And to me, I, I believe this framework can apply to the lay life as well. Because this is about us. This is about our life. Life composed of behavior, composed of the mind, and composed of wisdom. These three things support each other to live good life, whether you are a monk or a lay person. So we have uh, come to Understanding the level of precept and the higher precept or sila, the mind and higher mind and wisdom and higher wisdom. And now I hope you can have more confidence when we come to the framework that the Buddha mentioned of the the tricycle. Okay, this is the big the big uh, the biggest in the broadest sense of how the Buddha wants monk to be trained. And when we complete all of this training. We complete sila, we complete mind development, and we complete wisdom development up to the highest level of all three. We are, we can graduate. Congratulations. We become arahant. We become a person who are, have experienced the highest bliss as a man can attain, which is Nibbana. We can experience that. And that's it, that's it. This is it. This is how the Buddha wants us to be trained. All of his teaching always come back to this. Everything he teaches is about dealing with human suffering. Why are we suffering? Because you don't behave correctly to the people, to the nature. That's why you are suffering. So go learn about precept, develop precept, higher precept and highest precept. And by just observing precept, is that good enough for you to be happy? I think this question is interesting. Okay, you observe precept clean, 300 rule, no problem, manner good, humble, respect good, dress nice, kind, smile. Is that enough for you to be happy? Is that sustainable without meditation, without develop the wisdom? Can you just develop one thing and happy for life? Okay, no, why not? Why, what's wrong? Why is not enough just to develop one thing? Or can I just meditate? I don't want to observe precept. Can you just teach me how to steal the mind and... I want to enlighten today. When we learn the concept of Four Noble Truths, 
This is the big thing in the teaching of the Buddha, the Four Noble Truths, Dukkha. Dukkha usually translates to suffering, which is not enough. Okay? This meaning is not enough. It's oppression, it's unsatisfactoriness, it's worry, it's concern. Dukkha has many meanings. It's deep. That's why I, I usually I don't translate it. I just use the word Dukkha. We cannot find one single word that explains all the mention of the word Dukkha. Basically, okay, Dukkha is unhappy or suffering. Suffering comes to life in many forms. If you avoid killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, you know, lying or intoxicant, you help prevent more problems coming to your life. You consider, you know, you seem to be a good man because I can trust you. If I am your boss, I can, I, maybe I promote this man because he's, he is reliable. He will have responsibility. He will be honest. He will not take advantage from the company and his staff. It's good. Even though you are, think you are good because you observe precept, there may be time that you feel stressed, you feel lonely, you feel insecure. Oh, situation like this because of the COVID, what will happen to my company? Will they lay me off next month, next few months? So you worry, even though you observe precept clean. So suffering comes to life in a very refined or certain form. And when it hit you, precept is not enough to make sure you live life happy. You need something extra. You need extra medicine. And that medicine is called meditation. You see the picture? Mm -hmm. yeah. Got it? Mm -hmm. And that is why observe precept is not enough. Mm -hmm. And even though you meditate, you observe precept, okay, understand. I calm down, future is unclear, the past is gone, stay in the moment, let go, mm -hmm. let go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you relax for today. Next week you worry again. Then you need wisdom. When you have wisdom, you fully understood the whole cycle of problem. You will be fully relieved from whatever you are suffering with. You understand the law of karma, because wisdom is a huge topic. Okay? You know, nature of life, things happen. Okay? Hope it happens, it's come and go. Okay? Everything is impermanent. Company may, may, win, may go bankruptcy next few months. I may lose my job. If whatever happens, I will accept it. I will move on with my life. But today, I'm not going to worry about it. And that's wisdom. You need the third medicine to help you to deal with suffering. Even though you observe precept, you're a good father, good manager, but you deep down, you're not fully happy. And this is called dukkha. This is the nature of life. In the eyes of Buddhism, the reason you feel calm because you have developed wisdom up to the point where you see all the consequences, where it comes from, where it's heading, and then you're willing to accept the consequence. That's why you don't feel agitated. But apathy means because that's called ignorance. I don't know what to do, I'm just going to sit here and cry. Because you have no way out. You don't know what caused it, what's going to be happening. So you basically, you do nothing because you don't know. Oppositely, you do nothing because you're aware and you're willing to accept. Then that's, you can become with understanding. That's the big difference. Okay, so um, I'm okay now. It's almost 9 o'clock. Okay. I did not answer three questions. What is higher precept? What is higher mind? And what is higher wisdom? Tonight. So just keep it there. That means we will have the next session to cover, to continue. Okay, so with that, I'm done for tonight. Hope everyone learned something. And if you have any question, feel free to write it down and ask me next session. Okay, so we take a break. <laughs>